I'm going to be working here primarily in Lightroom today. So I like to, I like to work with Lightroom. This is typically my workflow and this is where I usually keep most of my files before I send them out to go, to go do excessive editing in other places. Lightroom is a good catalog program, but it's not really great for advanced retouching. Now, the first thing that I want to talk to you about is editing multiple faces and multiple people in Perfect Portrait. Now, in the first webinar, we went over the basics of working with Portrait and how easy it is to kind of get in and out quickly. But what happens when you have either an entire family of people that you need to retouch, or if you have two people that you need to retouch, one of whom is not necessarily uh, just face on in the camera? So we're going to take we're going to take this image here and this is kind of the perfect image to show for some of the some of the advanced things you can do inside perfect portrait. So, I will right click on my image, go to edit in and choose perfect portrait. Then I'll make sure I edit a copy with my Lightroom adjustment so I don't destroy my original image. Now, perfect portrait as most of you guys know, when you bring it into the program, it automatically is supposed to recognize where the face or faces are. Now in this image, it obviously recognized where one face was, but it did not recognize where the second face was. And that, that's, a, that's a common problem, especially when you have someone who's looking sideways. So to add a second face, all you do is click, make sure that you don't click inside the green box or it'll zoom into your face, but click on the face, the second face in your image, just click once, and it'll open up, it'll, it'll place this little kind of opaque square on top of your image, and then it'll pop up this little dialog box. And all you need to do is adjust the size of this face box to fit over the face in the image. So I'm just going to resize it down to make it fit on his face. We don't need any of that excess information on his hair or anything like that. Now, you can't rotate this dialog box, so it is going to go a little bit over her face, but we should be good. And once I'm done, all I need to do is click the apply button and it's going to go in and it'll take a minute to like actually have to think about it. And there we go. Now, this is what the program looks like when you have two faces in here and you can select either one at any time. You can select his face or her face. It just depends on what you want to do. So let's go ahead and let's let's start out with her face because this one's going to be this one's going to be kind of difficult. So I'll click inside her face here. And. It did an okay job of figuring out where the face is, but not the best. So I want to go in and I want to move around all of these control points to make sure that I have her face correctly selected. Now the little cyan dots go in the center of the pupil on the face. So I'll just click and drag those into place. And I'll do the same with this side as well. We'll just click and drag that into the center of her eye. And then we'll resize our control points to fit. I'm just clicking and dragging those points to get them to fit. And I'll do the same for the mouth as well. I'm just going to click and drag on those control points to make sure that I get the whole, the whole mouth, all of the teeth, and all of the lips. Now, once I'm done with that, I'll go up to the top right-hand corner, and I'm going to click on Hide Controls to hide those for me. Now, before I do any retouching here, as I talked about in the last webinar, Perfect Portrait does a baseline amount of adjustments, and it's done a baseline amount of adjustments on her face. However, it's pretty obvious that it's softened quite a bit around her hair, and it's softened a little bit on his face as well, and there are a lot of very similar tones, earthy, warm tones, here in this image. So one of the things that you can do inside Perfect Portrait is you can refine where the program has selected the skin. Now, to do that, you have to make sure that you have your face edit tool selected. And that tool automatically selects when you click inside that green box and zoom into someone's face, but just make sure you've got that tool selected. And then you're gonna go down to the bottom left-hand corner and you're gonna open up this mask view drop-down menu. And it says after right now, because we're looking at our after image. This is our final shot. If I click on this, you'll see that I can select a way to view my skin mask. So I'm going to choose mask red. And once I have that selected, anywhere that you can see clearly without red is somewhere that's, that's, being, that's being retouched by all of the panes on the right hand side. Anywhere that you see red is where the image is being protected from that skin retouching. 
So what I want to do is I need to mask out and I need to get rid of that skin retouching on everywhere else except for just her face. In the top left hand corner of your screen, you'll notice I have a brush tool that keeps popping up and this is automatically chosen when you choose that face edit tool. In your tool options bar here, you want to make sure that your mode is set to not skin. So you want to paint over these areas to say that they are not skin. And once you have that done, you can choose to use your perfect brush depending on your image. Sometimes it works really well, other times it doesn't. That's completely up to you. All you need to do is just start clicking and painting over the areas that you want to remove from her skin selection. Not his, we'll do him later. And we're just clicking and dragging over her hair and all of that, all of that extra skin. Make my brush just a little bit smaller there so I can get kind of some of these little smaller hair tendrils right by her face. And there we go. Now, one of the really cool things about working with Perfect Portrait is I'm going to zoom out really quickly so you guys can see a little bit more of this image. And you'll notice that she has a, a strapless dress on. You can actually paint in skin retouching on her chest as well. So if you want to, you can add shoulders, chest, arms, anything you want to this skin selection on the face. It doesn't just have to be her face. So to add to your skin selection, you just go up to the mode drop down menu and you swap this over to add to skin. And now if I want to, I can actually paint in skin retouching on her shoulders and her chest and all of that information as well. Now, this is completely up to you. Some people like to do their, their retouching on the other parts of the image separate. Um, it's just, it's completely, completely up to you. So it just depends on what you want to do and what you like to do as far as, as far as retouching goes. I'm going to turn my perfect brush off so I, I don't have to get around all these different tones and we're just going to click and it's going to be nice and dirty and we're going to pretend that I did a perfect job and so that you don't have to worry about it. Now, when you do a really good job and you make your, your skin selection, now I can retouch both her chest, her shoulders, and her face all kind of together in one. So you have that option for being able to do that. It's completely up to you. You can do whatever you want. It's, it's, it's your image, but I just like to make sure that people know that that option is there. And I just want to refine that, that skin mask just a little bit more. We don't want to soften areas like her like her, what is that, pendant. Um, and so we'll paint that out. And we'll make sure we get kind of more of that white dress. So that's not, that's not too bad. All right. Now, once we're done with our mask, and this is good, we're happy with it. If you just go back to the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you swap this over to after. Now I can go in and I can retouch my image. So on the right-hand side of the screen, I can do any skin retouching that I want to. So if I need to, um, it's the baseline works really well for this image. So there's not much I'm going to do here. I may reduce the soft, the skin smoothing just a tad um, because she doesn't really need it. And I can go down and I can edit things like teeth whitening, lip vibrance. I can go in and add a little bit more detail to the eyes so they pop out and a little bit of whiteness to the eyes because she's kind of in shadow. Whatever it may be, I can make those changes now. And what's really great is when I turn my preview on and off, which the shortcut for a preview is Control or Command P. When I turn my preview on and off, you can see that it's affecting all of the all of the skin areas down here as well. So it's affecting her chest, it's affecting her skin up here. So it's affecting kind of the the whole the whole gamut. Now, once I'm done with her and I'm finished and I'm happy with her retouching. If you go up to the top right hand corner, you'll see that there are arrow buttons and these arrow buttons allow you to just go on and select the next face in your image. So if you have a photo with multiple faces, if you just click on the select next face button, click, it'll zoom in and it'll show you the next face. Now, when you go up and you do that, if you've hidden the controls on your first face, you'll have to click on the show controls button to show the controls for the second face. Now, because we had to add this in this one in manually, we'll have to go in and we'll have to change where all of these control points are. When you're working with someone who has a, a side, a face that's looking off to the side, you just, to get rid of one of these eye, 
eye selections, you just take all of the control points and you just squish them in together so that they're not affecting any of the image. And then you can take this, this eye and you can slip it around his eyelashes there to help refine the eyelashes. But other than that, you'll be good to go. And I can do the exact same thing that I just did with my last face. I'll edit the skin mask. I'll make sure that the control points are in place. And then I'll go in and I'll add my retouching. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose the face select tool one more time. And it's going to zoom out for me. And it's going to show me my whole image here. Once I'm done with this and I click on apply, I mentioned this in the last webinar, but I want to make sure I mention it again. It saves all of your changes on a separate layer. So it goes in and instead of overwriting your original image with retouching, it places all of the retouching on a separate layer. And one of the reasons why that's so useful is you can always go in and re-edit, re, you can delete that layer, you can start from scratch, you can edit that layer. If you're a big Photoshop user, you can take that layer and you can customize a mask for that layer. Whatever it may be, you can go in and you can edit it accordingly or you can undo it, you can redo it, you can do whatever you want. So one of the, one of the plus sides about working with the photo suite and one of the many reasons why so many people love it is because it's a non-destructive workflow. So we're not out to destroy your images and we're not out to overwrite anything. Now, a really quick note about retouching here in Perfect Portrait is I think I saw this question in my last webinar and I want to address it really quickly. I'll talk about a little bit about it more later. But the difference is between retouching women, men, and children. When you retouch women, there's there's kind of a an overall understanding that, that retouching can go a little bit heavier on women. Our skin is apparently supposed to look softer and a little bit more poreless and it's supposed to look subtler and, and softer and, and all that jazz. It's the way that we view women in society and the way that, that we view female skin in society, we are allowed to go a little overboard as far as skin retouching goes. However, when it comes to men and children, for the most part, you want to be very minimal with that editing. Most of the time when I edit men in perfect portrait, all I do is take away, take the blemish slider, pump it up a little bit. I add a minuscule amount of skin smoothing, I take the evenness slider and I up that to make sure that I even out the skin tone. And then I go in and if I need to, I'll whiten the teeth and whiten the whites of the eyes. Other than that, I do very little to, to retouch men as far as, as far as skin smoothing and softening and blemish removal and all that goes. Everything is minimal compared to what I usually do for women. And it goes for the same with children. A lot of times if I'm editing pictures of children, just let me cancel out of this here so I can show you kind of some example images that might work really well. If you have an image, for example, of a, a teenage boy, I'm not going to want to do a heavy amount of editing to this image. I'm going to want to make sure that all I do is remove some of his blemishes, brighten up his eyes, and maybe even out his skin tone just a little bit. If I'm working on images of children, I want to go in and brighten up their eyes and maybe whiten their teeth just a tad but other than that, I want to leave it completely alone. The best part about working with kids is their skin is usually ridiculously smooth. They're kids. They, they, haven't, they haven't lived out in the world long enough to be weathered and, and you know, gross like us old people. So, so most of the time when you're working with children, you can, you can be very minimal about retouching. The, the only thing I usually do when I'm, when I'm working with children is I go in and I brighten up their eyes quite a bit. And that's just something that seems to be uh, it seems to be a little bit of a trend in photo retouching, and it seems to be something that a lot of people really like to do, and I definitely suggest it. So for this image, I would go in, and I'd brighten up the eyes, and I'd whiten his teeth just a tiny bit, and that would be it. Um, because he's a kid. We don't need to do any excessive retouching. Women are the ones that you get to go in, and you get to do lots of fun retouching, too, and if you think retouching is fun. Um, so you can do a lot of retouching to women, and it's perfectly acceptable. But if you over-retouch men and children, people tend to get a little... They think it's weird. And I completely agree. I think it's very odd when people over retouch children because children are children. They don't need to be retouched. So just a, a little side note about working with multiple different people and working with different sexes and different age types. Now let's go in and let's talk a little bit more. We're gonna we're gonna kind of exit perfect portrait. That's that's pretty much the basics of working with perf perfect portrait. That's most of what you're going to be doing in that program, um, and those are the basics. Perfect Portrait is a very simple program, but that's the best part of it. It's very easy to use. So I want to go in and I want to talk to you a little bit more about working with studio portraits and working, working with a layered workflow now. 
So let's go in and let's, let's open up this photo. And I'm going to take this into Perfect Portrait really quickly, but you'll see why in just a second. When you're working with an image from a studio shot like this one here, you have a very, very boring background. We have nothing in the background. He has kind of a dull look on his face and we need to do a little bit of, of retouching. And I also want to go in and I want to fix a little bit of this image. Um, I want to add kind of an effect to it. I want to add a new background. And this is a really great way to work with, to work with portrait studio images is when you have a blank background like this one, it's exceptionally easy to remove. And you can go in and you can place him pretty much anywhere you want. So in Lightroom, I'm going to go up to the File menu and go down to Plugin Extras, and I'm going to choose the perfect photo suite. And the reason why I do that is I want to open the program as a standalone. I want to use multiple different modules at once. If you're a Photoshop user, all the layered workflow things that I do here, you can do inside, inside Photoshop. But outside of that, you want to kind of come into the suite as a standalone so you can use it all together. Now let's let's start out in perfect portrait here and we'll go in and it's going to recognize where the face is and it's going to add kind of, you know, its adjustments here. I'm going to click inside the green box so I can zoom in and take a look at those control points and I want to move out the little eye sliders here so I can really brighten up those eyes. So I'm just clicking and dragging those control points there. And I'll make sure that the two sliders right in the middle of the mouth, which usually select the teeth, I want to push those together so we don't select any teeth here. And once I'm done, I'll click on hide controls. Now I can go in and I can, I can make any changes that I want to in the skin retouching pane. So I'm going to go down with the smoothing slider quite a bit because I don't really need to smooth the skin. I'm going to go down with the blemish slider as well because a little bit of grit on his skin is perfectly okay. The evenness slider is definitely a good one to use for this image because I can even out some of that reddish tone on his face. It's whitened the whites of the eyes and it added a little bit of detail to the irises. I can go up with both of those. And we don't need to whiten the teeth or add vibrance to, to the lips here as well. So once I'm, once I'm pretty much set inside Perfect Portrait, the only thing I want to do is I want to, I want to go in and I want to take a look at that skin mask. I want to make sure that it looks good. And I do this with every single image I open into Perfect Portrait. I check the skin mask every single time. And the reason why is because you never know what it's going to do. <clears throat> For this image, it went overboard with the skin. So I want to make sure my mode is set to not skin. And I just want to start painting out some of that area up there. Because it looks weird. We don't, we don't need it to, to go in and select that skin there or that select that hair there as a skin point, go in and remove the, the blurring on the areas like his hair and his lips here. One of the things that I like to do is remove this, the skin smoothing from areas like the nostrils and the, the, the areas right around the nostrils, um, so that they still stay dark so that their face doesn't lose a lot of definition there. And then I also like to go in and I like to remove some of the skin smoothing from the eye, right around the eyes where the eyelashes and like the eye creases are. And that helps just add a little bit of extra definition to the eyes. So I always like to go in and do that because I think it helps quite a bit. Now, once I'm done with my skin mask, we'll change that over back to the after view mode. And I'll look at my, my before and after. Here's my original image and here's my after image. It's a very subtle change. Most of it is in the eyes. There's very little on the face. If I want to, again, I can, I can edit that. And we'll add a little bit more evenness and maybe add just a tad more skin smoothing. Outside of that, I want to be done with this image. So I'll click on the apply button and I'll bring it back into perfect layers. Now, part of the reason why I went a little overboard with this image is I want to show you a little trick that I use in perfect layers here. You can reduce the opacity of the entire portrait editing layer inside perfect layers, which means that if I want to, if I take this retouching and it's a little too strong, I'm just going to take the opacity slider and I'm going to reduce it down until I'm happy. So here's my original image. Here's my after. And I can go in and I can maybe put this at about 70%. Then it's not overboard, but I still have just a little bit of smoothing and evenness there to help reduce some of that skin tone funkiness. 
Now, another reason why I didn't do, I wanted to just do baseline retouching here is now I can go into perfect layers and I can use the retouching tools in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the copy button. We're going to duplicate this perfect portrait layer. And now we've got a new layer that I can do other retouching on. So my first perfect portrait layer is, is just the skin smoothing layer. It's brightening up the eyes, it's adding a little bit of smoothness to the skin, and it's evening it out. The second perfect portrait layer is just going to be for retouching. So a lot of times when I work with, work, work with portraits, I like to do them on separate layers. And this is just a, a personal preference of mine. I'm going to relabel my layer as retouching so they're on, they're on their separate layers. And I'm going to go over and I'm going to choose my retouch brush. And once I have it selected, now I can go in and I can just start clicking out some of the blemishes on his face. And that was pretty much it, the ones right down at the bottom. Now, another way that you can use the retouch brush is by swapping it over and clicking on the Use Clone Stamp brush. The Use Clone Stamp brush can be really useful. Let's lower the opacity of this brush down to about 40% or so. And I'm going to make my brush just a little bit bigger. And if I hold down the Option key, you get this little cross right here. And the cross indicates the area that you want to choose to replace. So I'm going to replace the under eye circles here. You want to choose a part of the skin to select to replace for that under eye circle. So I'll click on the Option key, and I'm just going to click down here underneath the under eyes. And then when I drag my mouse up, you'll see that I'm getting kind of a replacement tone that's going to go over those under eyes. So I'm just going to click and drag under the eye. And I'll do the same on the right hand side here. So we'll click and we'll drag. And you can click and drag a couple of times if you want to. So I'm just clicking and dragging twice here. Now it's a very subtle change. And I can show you the before and after here. I'm going to turn this layer on and off. Here's my original layer, and here's my after layer. Now, one of the best parts about putting this on a separate layer is I can go in and I can reduce the opacity of this layer as well. And that can help blend any of the retouching changes that you made into the rest of the image. So it's one of the many reasons why I like to put retouching on a separate layer. I like to go in and make sure that I can reduce the things like opacity or change things like blend modes so that my image looks a little bit more uniform. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to go in and I want to show you a little trick about perfect layers that a lot of people don't know about. So I copied over and created a new layer just by clicking on the copy button here. Now another way that you can go in and you can do that, let's actually delete this layer here so I can show it to you. If you have two different layers and you want to merge them together, instead of clicking the merge button, which is going to combine those layers and then you'll lose your layered workflow, you can go up to your layer menu and go down to new stamped layer. When I select that, I get a brand new layer that's merged these two below together and I can go in and I can do whatever I want. So I can let's name this retouching and I can go in and let's do the same thing. We're just going to, we're going to remove the blemishes down on his chin. So we'll just go in and we'll click and drag, click and drag and getting rid of those blemishes and I can do the same and we can reduce kind of the under eye circles here so I'm just kind of clicking and dragging and getting rid of those and once I'm done now I've got this brand new stamped layer and I can do this repeatedly this is a really great tool to use when you're doing a lot of retouching you can go in and you can basically create a new layer that you have access to editing now the next thing that we're going to do is we want to mask out the background of this image so we've gone in and we've done some pretty basic retouching. So we went in and we did a retouching layer and we did the perfect portrait layer. And it's very subtle because I'm working on a picture of a young boy, so I don't want to go overboard. Now I'm going to click on perfect mask to remove the background. Now, when you're working with studio backgrounds, for the most part, removing these backgrounds are really easy. I don't usually have a very hard time removing studio backgrounds. I had a hard time the other day because I had a girl who was wearing kind of a vintage wedding dress and it was very light and we were photographing her on a gray background and kind of blended together. Um, 
But for the most part, I, I don't usually have problems removing these studio backdrops. And it's one of the best parts about working with this is inside Perfect Mask, I'm just going to go over and I'm going to select my Drop Brush tool. And I'm going to go through. And I'm going to go down and just click and drag on that background. Now it's not going to appear as though it does anything. And the reason why let me undo that is because right now you're looking at all of your layers, your entire layer stack. The layer underneath this retouching layer is the exact same image here. So a way to get around that is by going to the bottom left hand corner of your, your image and opening up this all layers drop down menu. And this allows you to view the mask that you're actually creating. And again, I like to choose the mask overlay option. That seems to be the one that I really like, but you can also choose something like mask white or mask dark. And this will show you what the mask looks like in a different color. So now I can click and I can drag and I can see what my image is going to look like on a darker background. So I'm just using my, my drop brush tool and I'm getting rid of that background here. Now I need to go in and hone some of these edges here. So I'm just going to go in and select my refine tool, my refine brush. And once I have my refine brush selected, I'm just going to go in and we're going to click and drag over the hair here. I'm going to do it on the left and right hand sides so we can remove some of that, some of that excess. And there we go. And then the last thing I'll do is take my chisel tool to chisel away the edge pixels around his shirt. And with the chisel tool selected, I'm just going to click and drag over his shirt there maybe once or twice. We'll do the same down here and we'll chisel on the left and right hand sides. Now, if you're interested in a slightly more in-depth view about Perfect Mask, I'm using this program very quickly because this background is really boring. If you want a slightly more in-depth look, we have great video tutorials on our website that show you how to use it a little bit more in-depth than this. I'm trying to go through it pretty quickly so I can kind of walk you through a couple of the other cool, cool things to do with portraits. So once I have my background removed and I'm happy with it, I want to go over to the right-hand side of my screen and there's an adjust mask dialog box here. I want to go to the option that says apply as, open up this drop-down menu, and I like to choose this option. It's called apply as a copy layer with a layer mask. So what it's going to do is it's going to take the layer that I had selected, that photo layer. It's going to copy it onto a new layer, and then it's going to give me a layer mask. Now, once I have that selected and I click apply, it'll go in. And now I have my new mask layer on top of my retouching layer, on top of my perfect portrait layer. They're all here in my layer stack and I can use them all accordingly. Now what I want to do is I want to add a new background. And this can be anything you want. On the left hand side of my screen I have my extras category open and you'll see it's just the extras has been selected. You can choose your own photos from the browser or you can choose one from our extras category. We have a whole bunch of prepackaged backgrounds that you can use for whatever you want. So we could select if I go to the walls category I can choose maybe like a grungy wall. So I can choose maybe like a brick wall if I wanted that or maybe this kind of cool grungy white brick wall. Whatever I want to use as my new background, I can select that. So I'm going to choose this brick wall here. When I have a new background selected, I'm just going to double click it. And you want to make sure that you add it as a new layer. And it's going to go in and it's going to add it as a, as a brand new layer. Now, this wall was selected underneath the copy of my, of my mask image here. So I now I have my, my boy right on top of my mask layer automatically. I can resize this wall layer if I want to. So if I go over and I've got my wall layer selected, if I choose my transform tool on the left-hand side of my screen, and then on the top right-hand corner of my screen, I want to click on the fill button. When I click on that, it takes the entire layer and it fills it in to fit my canvas. And that's a good way of just kind of shrinking a, shrinking a background and make sure it fits into your image. And this works both for enlarging and decreasing the size of something. Now once I've changed the size, I click apply and I've got my brand new image. I've got my boy on top of my brand new wall. Now one of the best parts about working with a layered workflow 
inside perfect layers. And one of the reasons why I think it's very important, whether you are working with either your original background or a new background, what we've done is we've basically separated the foreground and the background of this image. And again, whether you use your own background, whether you use a new background, or whether you use one of our backgrounds, it won't matter. You have separated the image into a foreground and a background. And what that means is now I can edit them separately if I want to. So let's say I want to add some sort of grunge effect to him to match the background a little bit more. Inside my layers stack, I want to choose the boy layer right up on top with my layers mask and click on perfect effects. Now inside perfect effects, what I can do is add, let's go to the grunge category here and I'm going to scroll through and let's choose, let's do the Monday cool filter. I'll click on that filter and it only applies it to him. It, it does not apply it to the entire image because we've separated down our photo into him versus the background. I can now edit each one of these separately and I can go through and I can add any grunge layer I want to just to him and leave everything else alone. So I could go in and I could add this really kind of cool, super grungy effect that really pulls out his freckles, or I can pull out just kind of a very simple darkening effect or whatever it may be. I can go in and I can add an effect just to him. So let's, let's go in and let's add this, this Arkham effect and I'll select it and once I'm done in here, I'll click apply and it puts me back into perfect layers and I can do the same for the background as well. So let's say in the background, I'll select my wall layer here in the layer stack, click on perfect effects and let's go back to the grunge category and we'll add a different grunge layer. We'll go in and we'll add the, the grunge dark vignette. And once I have that selected, I can go and I can change the mode of this so that it will blend into my background a little bit better. I can add a different grunge effect. So let's go in and let's add, let's add the grunge glow or just the straight grunge. That one looks really cool. So by separating these two down, I have access to editing these layers separately. And this is really important, I think, when you're working on portraits, because most of the time when you're working on a, a person, you're going to need to do separate edits based on things like skin tone. Skin tone can be mussed up very, very easily. And a lot of times people go overboard with adding things like vintage effects or styling effects that make a person's skin look really weird. So by pulling them out of the background, you can add a really cool effect to the background and then add a slightly subtler and different effect to the foreground so that their skin doesn't get kind of crazy. So I'm going to add a vignette to this image here. Let's do the big softy vignette. And once I'm done in here, I'll click apply. Now that I'm done, I've got my new composite image of him up against his background. If I wanted to, I could take this into focal point and I could add a blur to the background too. So it kind of blurs out a little bit. Anything you want to do, you can combine multiple images together. And it's the best way personally that I've found to work with portraits. By separating a person from their background, you can add things separately and you can customize it for the person. Um, one of the things inside Perfect Effects that I've spent a lot of time doing is creating portrait friendly presets. When you add presets to people, you either, I've noticed this, there are two different ways that you want to go. People either want to be very soft with their portraits and they want to add a very nice, simple portrait effect, or they want to go grungy. They want to add something that's really rugged, that, that looks very freakishly detailed, and a lot of times it's slightly desaturated. So it's usually kind of a, a very rugged portrait or a very soft portrait. Rarely is there something that's in between. And it's a lot, it's very popular these days, days to go one way or the other. And inside Perfect Effects, there are a lot of effects that you can use to do both of those things. Um, but most of the time, what I've noticed is that I don't like those effects always on the backgrounds of images. So most of those effects don't work as well on landscapes. They work really great on portraits, but they don't work really well in the picture of the lake in the background. So this is my preferred workflow, and it's something that I always suggest people use, is, is using Perfect Mask or whatever masking program you prefer. But I like to use my Perfect Mask to separate my two parts of the image. And using Perfect Layers, because it's on a 
layer mask, I can reuse this again and again here in layers. All right. So it's about 11, almost 1140 now, and I've been talking at you for a while. There's about, there's about five to 10 minutes left. And I told you guys I wanted to save that just for questions. So if there's anything you want to know that I have done, whether it be in this webinar or the last webinar, I recognize a couple names in there from people from the last webinar. So if there's anything you want to know about that I've done, I'm just going to hang out for the next 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so, and just answer some questions. So anything that I did, you want me to reiterate any programs, any anything you guys want me to talk about, feel free to ask those in the questions panel and I'll get to those now. All right, so there's two questions in there and I'm gonna answer those. Ooh. All right, so the first question is, how did you add a new layer? Really quickly. So if you're in the program, and we're gonna start back from our original image here with no retouching. If you're in the program, you can either copy your layer over, so basically duplicate that layer, or you can go up to the layer menu and choose new stamped layer. So two different ways that you can use perfect layers to create a new layer. I prefer new stamped layer because it combines whatever layers are below it and merges them into a new one. Copy layer sometimes can get a little funky if you have any, any effects. It'll copy over the layer with all of the effects and, and sometimes it'll duplicate effects and I much prefer new stamped layer. So that's up to you, but there are two different ways that you can do that. All right, the next question is, can you can you apply a blur to the background? Yes, I can. Let me go in and do that. So we've got this grungy background, we wanna add a blur to it. You can, you can add a blur inside Perfect Effects, but Focal Point is the best place to do that. So let's select Focal Point here, we'll launch the program. Now inside Focal Point, what you wanna do is, is, especially when you're working with a portrait, you wanna select your focus bug, which is the, the thing that I'm holding right now, Anything underneath the grid will remain in focus. Anything on the outside of the grid will, will be out of focus. Now, once I have that selected, I wanna go to my shape menu on the right-hand side of the screen and change this to round. And then what I can do is I can just place this bug underneath the face so that we have nothing in the background that's in focus. So I'm basically just hiding it out of view of the background that I can see. Now I can go in and we can add whatever blur we want. So here in focal point, I, I usually, what I do is I just take the amount slider and I move it around until I'm happy. That's a little too blurred. That's not blurred enough. That's kind of a good middle point there. I want it soft, but I still want to be able to see some of the grit. Um, the other really cool thing about focal point is you can actually do some really cool effects to your background. So you can do things like edit brightness and contrast in the background. So I can actually edit the brightness here. So we'll just darken that a little bit and then we'll increase the contrast. And now I'm just kind of increasing that grungy effect, except that it's it's got a slightly softer blur to it. Now, once I'm done in here and I click apply and it brings me back into perfect layers, it adds that focal point option as a brand new layer. All of these are on separate layers. So I have my, if I start all the way at the beginning, Let's go in and I just want to show you what my layered workflow actually is. Here's my original photo. I did my perfect portrait layer and my retouching layer. Then I've got my original wall background, my perfect effects wall background, and my focal point background. And then I have my original retouching layer and then my perfect effects layer. All of these are separate. Now it looks like, and there was a question about saving your layers for later and whether these would come across in Photoshop. Now, this image here, you'll notice at the top of my screen is a PSD file. As long as I save this as a PSD file, these layers will be saved. So if I go to the file menu and just choose save, it's gonna go in and it's gonna save this PSD file and I can re-access these layers at any time. Um, so it doesn't matter which program I'm in, because this is a PSD file, these layers will be read as actual layers. 
Okay. Let's see. A um, couple other questions. So um, how do you separate the portrait and the background? The way that I separated the portrait and the background was by going into perfect mask and just removing the background. But because I had in my adjust mask on the right hand side of my screen, when I removed my background, as long as this apply as drop down menu reads copy with a layer mask, it will copy my photo over with a layer mask. And then I've basically separated the foreground and the background. All right, um, there's a question. Can you open this image in Photoshop? Yes, I can. It is a PSD file. I can open it in Photoshop. All right. Um, how do you add more than two faces in an image? If you have a photo, so this was already saved, I think, but we'll close it. If you have an image like this one where it has multiple people in it, it will automatically recognize that there are lots of people in the image. So if I bring this into perfect portrait, which I'm going to do right now, it will automatically recognize all of these faces. So it's going to go in and it's going to, it'll take a second, but it's going to go in and it's going to place a box around all of the different faces in this image. So now I have four different boxes here and I can zoom in and I can edit any of them. So let's say we want to zoom in and edit the, the face of the baby. We'll click on that face. We'll zoom it in and I'll go in and I'll make any adjustments here. And it didn't do the best job of selecting her face. So I'll have to go in and, and edit that just a little bit because it looks kind of funky. And once I'm done with her face, let's say, you know, I, I did a good job with her face. All I need to do is either click on the next button, the next face button in the top right hand corner to go to the next face. So we'll swap over to him. Or you can choose the face select tool again, which will zoom you out of your image. And you can go in and you can click on another face. So two different ways that you can do that. All right, there was a question. I have a couple badly processed films that have a high contrast magenta layer. This results in magenta highlights and green shadows. How do you suggest I correct this? Um, so if you have if you have an image that has any form of color correction, you'll want to do that inside Perfect Effects. So in Perfect Effects, let's go ahead and let's um, let's cancel out of this image here because this is not a very good example of it. All right. So if we have if we have an image and we want to go in and we want to separate the highlights from the shadows, and we want to go in and let's choose. Let's see. This will actually be a good image to show. So let's take this photo into Perfect Effects, and I'll show you a couple little little tidbits. All right. While this is opening, really quick. Um, there was a quick question before I jump into perfect effects about um, how the presets inside perfect portrait work and, and kind of how, how they work and what they are. The presets inside perfect portrait are, are ones that are good baselines. Um, so in each one of the categories, you can go in and you can choose it's all those presets do are change some of the settings on the right hand side in your skin retouching color correction and eyes and mouth pains. Um, you can play around with them if you want. There are a couple fun ones in there, like, you know, vampires, um, and stuff like that. There's like a twilight filter. That's really, really funny. Um, so you can go in and you can use any of those. I don't usually use them. Um, the, the children ones don't really do what I want. And the ones for the women are usually a little too harsh. So what I do is I just make my own, but you can play around with them and you can see what they do. 